Hi YouTube, 133 megahertz here, now in glorious high definition, thanks to my sister's camera. Something I want to share with you. Uh, this TV came in for repair, this old school beauty, it's a Sony KV2145R. It's a 21 inch, apparently from 1982. <clears throat> a really old school TV. Very big, very heavy. Let's look at the back. And apparently it doesn't turn on anymore. And so I'm going to repair it. I really want to see this working. It's a really nice set. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Here it is with the cover off. Excuse me if I'm if I'm getting the focus wrong. I'm still learning to use this really fancy camera So here it is uh, the chassis is an SCC 355 a a and as you can see it's a US model it runs on 110 volts 120 volts AC and Since here we use a uh, 220 volts AC that's a, that's our local mains voltage Probably when it entered the country, you know, uh, this step-down transformer was fitted in in this spare space they found in the wooden cabinet. So this takes the 220 volts AC local voltage and steps it down to 110 volts that the TV needs. And also the power plug has been replaced, you know, with a local one instead of the flat prong. So aside from that, it's pretty normal TV. It's an old-school chassis. Check out the the old school metal can transistors that's for the power supply regulation and in there maybe you cannot see it but there's the horizontal output and it's of the same style um, but what I, I, I really surprised me about this is well here's the power supply you filter capacitor your rectifier diodes you think oh a, a pretty standard uh, switching power supply but there's no switching transformer anywhere to be seen. There's no chopper, there's no line line transformer, nothing. No transformer at all. So how does it do it? Well, my theory, you know, by tracing the circuit, is that the, this TV uses a linear voltage regulator. You know, like the 7805, you know those chips in, the, in your gaming consoles that take, you know, 9 volts to 24 volts and they regulate them down to 5 volts? by dissipating the, the difference of voltage, the excess voltage as heat. They use an internal transistor. So I think this does the same, you know, no transformer. It uses this old school transistor. So it takes the rectified 120 volts AC, US voltage, that is, when you rectify it, uh, convert it to DC, it becomes 177 volts DC approximately. And this TV has a B plus voltage of 135 volts, so there's a, about a 40 volt difference. So I think this takes, you know, raw, raw rectified mains voltage. <laughs> and it, you know, it regulates it down to the 135 the TV needs by dissipating the, you know, the 40 something volts difference as heat in this massive aluminum heat sink. And check out this massive, ginormous power resistor that's also in the transistor circuit. So yeah, what a beast! It's pretty wasteful of power, you know, just to just to uh, dissipate the excess voltage as heat. It's pretty wasteful, and it's really dangerous because all the all of the chassis is at mains potential. So this the whole chassis is a, a, an electrocution hazard. It's all line connected, there's no transformer, nothing. It's as raw as you can get. Okay. Another thing is that this, this TV has been messed, uh, messed with before. There's no VHF antenna connector. And well, aside from the transformer I talked about you earlier. Here's the VHF connection, so somebody removed it. Somebody was already here and didn't figure out how to fix it. So yeah, I checked this out and the transistor is shorted. It's a short circuit, so the power supply is dead. Let's start tracing down. Diets are okay. Everything's okay, but in the B plus there's a really hard short circuit. 
So I, I, I began to test all the other components on the B line, the B plus line, and unfortunately the flyback transformer is dead. It tests out as a really, really hard short circuit, so this might be shorted out. Check out this old school flyback transformer, really big, <clears throat> and it's an old separate board. Uh, so yeah, with removing the flyback transformer, the, the short disappears. And well, I, uh, since I can only do multimeter measurements to this, I took it to a place where they have a professional flyback tester. And unfortunately, it came out bad. So that, pre that depressed me. You know, it's really sad because if you can't find a replacement flyback, the whole TV is crap. But here's what, here's what, here's the amazing thing, because I, I was about to write it off as non-repairable, not worth repairing. Where are you gonna get it? You know, an, uh, a flyback from 1982. But I started looking around. You're not gonna believe this. I found a replacement flyback. And it's a new, a new, it's a new replacement. It's from H HR Demon. Those Spanish guys who, who manufacture replacement flyback transformers for TVs and monitors. I can't believe they, they actually uh, still manufacture flybacks for these old TVs, you know. I'm really, really, this is amazing, this is awesome. Good. These guys from HR Demon, they're giving you the opportunity to, you know, to give, it, give this old TV a second chance by, by manufacturing a, a compatible replacement part. So yeah, I, I was amazed I could find a replacement, a replacement flyback transformer for this. So I, I bought it on the spot and I'm going to repair it. I'm going to replace the flyback and we'll get this TV going. Okay, so this is where I fit the universal power supply. Here's a random connector I found on the board. Here's the whole power supply area. I'm not using this anymore. Maybe, well, maybe except for the degaussing coil, I have to make some arrangements to have that working again. But I'm ditching the whole linear regulator and just, you know, getting power directly from the universal supply into the TV. So the main voltages here are the 135 volts. That's here the B plus voltage. Here's a test point for it. And 12 volts. Those are the two voltages I could find and they're here in this connector. Here's the B plus. Here's the 12 volts and ground. So I just solder wires directly to them and they go straight to the universal power supply you know to the 120 volts the 12 volts that's regulated and ground and since this requires 135 i can adjust that using this potentiometer once i get the tv running i just have to adjust that to 135 and i'll be all set so let's see what happens almost ready for testing the new flyback has been installed. I had to splice the high voltage connection, something I didn't really want to do, but I couldn't get the I couldn't get this removed. The the high voltage wire from the HSTAT cable, no matter how hard I tried, it wouldn't come off. So I had to splice it and I tried to insulate it really, really well using a hot glue on top of the solder connection and then heat shrink tubing. And on top of that, the, the rubber caps that came with the old and the new flybacks. So yeah, almost ready. Here's the universal power supply in its place. But uh, something I found you know, when I was about to finish the installation of the new flyback is that the HSTAT module is cracked. I'll try to focus on it. I found a crack on it and that's got me a little worried that that might be the result of high voltage arcing or discharge so well I, I'm going to try to power this up because I, I've read that in this case uh, 
it may have survived. It might be still good, but there may be some arcing from here to the to the metal casing. So I'm going to use epoxy to to fill the cracks and you know try to reinforce the insulation for the high voltage. So wish me luck. Now we're ready for testing. The H stat is sealed. I have got an aerial. Just in case, here's the power supply. This is for monitoring the B plus. And here's the plug, and this will be either it works or it blows up spectacularly. Here, uh oh, the test lead came off. Okay, so here we go. We have high voltage. You heard that? We have high voltage. Anything on the screen? Wow! We got a picture. No sound though. It's pretty terrible, but to start. With the B adjusted to 130 volts, I'm not wary of going up to 135 as the specification says. Uh, well, the color's really messed up, but that might be because of, you know, uh, not hooking up the, the ghost coil. So the CRT must be pretty magnetized, you know, judging by the edges. But it seems like we don't have any convergence at all, horizontal static conversion. So after all, the H stat module must be bad, even though it, it's not arcing. Apparently the, the epoxy thing worked but uh, <clears throat> but it might not be generating the the convergence voltage so we have no convergence at all you see 130 volts so it's a start you know for being completely dead and having a shot fly back so tune in next time because I have a lot of work to do now to see if we can get this to an acceptable level so well, see you next time and thanks for watching.